Denise, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. I'll make sure. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, it's it's uh, honestly it's nice to have a little connection with everyone. It is Tuesday, November seventeenth, twenty twenty. I am Michelle Diallard Brenner, and this is our New York State Appearance Enhancement Advisory Committee meeting. Um, due to current circumstances, obviously a virtual meeting via WebEx. Um, so once again, welcome to everybody in attendance. Um, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and just uh, do a roll call. Um, I'm not quite sure how the best to get this started. Um, uh, I guess we'll just go from the top of participants if everyone can see who's there and go that way with who's in attendance. Again, myself, Michelle Dialler Brenner. Um, I am the board chairperson. Okay, Michelle, um, is Anthony Fiore here? I don't see him on the list. How about Shirley Chang? Shirley, are you here? <laughs> okay, so it appears that you are the only board member, Michelle. Yep, there will not be a quorum for today's meeting, obviously. Um, should we go through the DOS staff to start with, please? Um, we don't need to do that on the um, on a virtual meeting. Okay. Well, then, in that case, we'll continue to move forward and move right into um, department and subcommittee reports. Starting with, with what is first on our agenda is the enforcement update um, with Ernest Delaney, please. Um, yes, good morning, everyone. My enforcement report will cover DOS investigations of the governor's executive order complaints against the lawn. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic on March 22nd, 2020, Governor Cuomo signed a series of executive orders which closed all non-essential businesses, including appearance enhancement and nail salon. The governor also created statewide guidelines for how salons can safely reopen and operate. To enforce the guidelines, the governor established the New York State Pause Enforcement Assistant Task Force. The task force enforces the statewide guidelines by collecting complaints against salons and practitioners who are operating in violation of the governor's executive orders and referring those complaints to the Department of State for investigation. Complaints are filed by phone or online, and the typical complaint um, will make allegations such as no employees at a salon are wearing face masks, a salon is overcrowded and fell in to practice social distancing rules, or a salon is operating when the salon is prohibited from being open. These complaints can be filed anonymously. As of today, a total of 1,046 complaints were referred to DOS for investigation. Our investigations are focused on getting the salons and compliance, which may mean we contact the salon owner, advise, advising the owner of the governor's executive order and receiving a statement or proof from the owner of their compliance with the executive order. The more serious violations receive written warnings directing the salon to cease operations. And um, also, DOS also refers some of these complaints to an appropriate law enforcement regulatory agency. Uh, that concludes my enforcement report. Are there any questions? No, I don't think so. Ernest, thank you very much for that update. Sorry, uh, I have a go ahead. Ernest, I'm sorry. Regarding the more serious, this is Jasmine Ernest. Regarding the more serious um, complaints, how many do, you, if any, how many do you know were the more serious? Uh, complaints where there was an order for the salon to cease and desist any kind of business. Yeah, um, I don't have um, those numbers. Um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, for most of our complaints, because of the nature of it, that, you know, um, uh, you know, the employees are not wearing face masks, that the, you know, the um, the salon is not practicing social distancing. You know, we usually can get some sort of uh, statement from the owner or some sort of, uh, you know, proof of their compliance. 
Um, but I don't have the numbers on the, the more serious ones. I can, I can, I can get those numbers. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine. Any other questions for Ernest? Anyone? Okay. Um, moving on to topic B under that category is a processing report from Emily Lupe. Emily, please. Good morning. Um, included in your materials, uh, in the materials you were provided, you will find uh, licensing statistics for November of 2019 and November of 2020. The report shows the number of appearance enhancement licenses broken down by license type. Um, it should be noted the 2020 numbers include only licensees and do not include those licensees whose licenses may have expired and are covered by Executive Order 202.11, which allows individuals licensed by the Department of State to extend the expiration of their license during the state of emergency. Um, did anyone have any questions? All right, thank you. Great. Emily, thank you so much. Next topic is written and practical exam updates. Uh, Shannon McGuire, please. Good morning. Um, the division suspended all licensed examination services on March 16th due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Exam applicants were notified by email of exam cancellations. Exam, uh, written and practical exams remo uh, resumed statewide until July. The division restored uh, written appearance enhancement examinations in Albany on July 6th. On July 20th, we restored exams in Binghamton, Buffalo, Franklin Square, Hobhog, Rochester, Syracuse, and Utica. Written exams resumed in New York City and Rockland County in mid-August. The division piloted uh, practical exams for cosmetology, aesthetics, and nail specialty during the last two weeks of July. We have since resumed state uh, testing statewide at all schools that have opened and welcomed us back for testing. Um, exam candidates who had exams that were canceled due to COVID-19 were sent notifications of their cancellations with instructions to monitor their account for their new exam date. As exams were restored, we rescheduled candidates that had canceled exams for the next available exam in their region. All written exam candidates that had canceled exams have now been rescheduled. We are working our way through the practical exams as those sites reopen. We have established uh, COVID-19 safety measures for our exam sites, proctors, examiners, as well as the exam candidates. Our exam proctors and examiners are responsible for ensuring that these measures are followed appropriately. We have reduced the capacity to ensure six feet spacing between exam candidates. Exam proctors, examiners, and exam candidates are advised not to attend the exam if they have symptoms, have been in contact with, a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 positive person in the past 14 days. Um, we also update that checklist to include the most current travel advisory. Um, our proctors and examiners ensure that all uh, safety precautions are being taken at the exams. Exam candidates, proctors, and examiners must wear masks at all times. Our proctors and examiners wear gloves while handing exam con exam documents that are touched by other proctors and exam candidates. We have a safety uh, precaution set up to ensure that there is six feet spacing during check-in at our exams. We ask that all candidates, examiners, and proctors sanitize their hands before and after the exam. We have instructed all candidates to bring their own writing instrument for the exam. And our exam, our exam proctors and examiners disinfect services prior to and after each exam session and must wear gloves while doing so. We uh, had an update to our written aesthetics exam and that first updated exam was given in Albany on July 6th and is now being administered statewide. Are there any questions? All right, thank you. Okay, Shannon, thank you so much. Um, next under that category are practical exam revisions for COVID-19 precaution compliance. Um, Denise Tidings, if you can address that would be great, thanks. All right, good morning. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I will be reporting on the practical examination updates. Um, to ensure the safe administration of practical examinations during the COVID-19 pandemic, all appearance enhancement practical examinations have been updated accordingly. 
The updated exam reflects the new COVID-19 guidelines and additional PPE requirements as outlined in the governor's executive orders. Um, to help ensure that social distancing efforts are met, examinees may no longer use live models for practical examinations. That's probably the largest change that we've made. Um, well, mannequins were required for the cosmetology practical exam prior to the updates. Mannequins are now required for the nail specialty, aesthetics, and natural hairstyling ex exams as well. This change was made to help reduce the risk of infection for individuals who want to take their practical examination, and the transition has appeared to go well. We first piloted the updated practical examinations in the Albany area at the end of July and began offering the other exams at uh, mother locations statewide beginning in August. Most practical examination procedural requirements remain the same with some minor adjustments. Um, for instance, you know, we used to do some waxing on the arm during the uh, aesthetics exam and the mannequins that we use don't have the arms, so the waxing is just, the, the waxing simulation is only done on the face. Um, practical exam success rates have been relatively unaffected by the new requirements. Updated examination documents and COVID-19 checklists for exam candidates may be found on our website at www.dos.ny.gov under the respective license web pages. And as Shannon mentioned, um, the licensing division has also established COVID-19 safety measures for exam sites and examiners that must be followed when administering the practical exams. Does anyone have any questions? Denise, thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to hold on to you, if you don't mind, moving on to um, the next item on our agenda, our action items. And under that is a scope of practice and procedural update. Um, so, Denise, if you can address that as well, please. Okay. I'll now provide you with the procedural update. Um, to clarify, this is our ongoing effort to make determinations on procedures that may or may not fall under the scope of the Parents Enhancement Licensure. Um, since the uh, advisory committee met back in February, there have been a few procedural updates. Um, one um, is for radio frequency facials. Uh, the New York State Medical Board opined that radio frequency facials would be considered the practice of medicine. The medical board stated, like RF diathermy, this is an introduction of energy to alter the dermis. While there is no penetration by a needle, there is dermal modification, which we would consider the practice of medicine. Um, the next one they ruled on was a vacuum therapy. The New York State Medical Board provided us with a statement that the New York State Board for Massage Therapy does not believe that vacuum therapy should be considered within their legal scope, and the medical board does not believe that the procedure falls in within their medical scope either. Did you spell that? What is Becky? What did you say that was? Vacuum. That was um, vacuum therapy. B A C U U M. And then the third procedure that uh, they opined on was um, cryotherapy. The New York State Medical Board felt that cryotherapy would firmly be placed in the practice of medicine if it is considered to be a treatment. Otherwise, they mentioned that the FDA regulates devices. The procedural list that we've been compiling has been finalized and is currently being reviewed as a final step before making this information publicly available. Does anyone have any questions? What was the ruling on vacuum therapy? On vacuum therapy, um, it was that they felt they the medical board did not feel it was within their scope and in, in the scope of medicine, and they must have consulted with the massage therapy as well, and they did not feel that that practice was in within their scope. So it would be up to the Department of State 
um, our, our legal counsel to decide whether or not to make a determination, whether or not it falls within our scope. For parents enhancement licensure. Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Any other questions regarding that topic for Denise? No, and Denise, as you said too, that is definitely um, areas that we continue to focus on and revisit. Some of our biggest struggle with that is definitions that get put put forward and how they're 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 put out there. For instance, vacuum therapy, and that's something that you know the Ventus has been used in aesthetics for sixty some odd years, and then cryotherapy is definitely another new topic with all these cryotherapy clinics that are not medical facilities. So we'll continue to work on on all of those before putting them out for the public. Right, and there will be new ones that will crop up from time to time. And, um, you know, maybe I should share this as well, because I do think there is a little bit confusion um, in within the industry. Um, you know, I received an email from someone yesterday um, and they were upset about, they, they felt that we were preventing them from practicing some, in some of the areas, um, you know, and I explained that there, there's a process um, you know, we have to have our legal counsel decide whether or not they feel, you know, it, it falls within our scope by the definition that's provided in the statute. And if it doesn't clearly fall in there, we have to make sure that it doesn't fall under a license from another agency or department um, before it, it's something that you would be allowed to do. You know, Michelle, you understand the process because we've been working on this for so long. There's new right. procedures that come along all the time. You know, we, we need to investigate them and, and find out, um, you know, where where they fall. And, and maybe they, they fall places, you know, where maybe you feel they should not. And that's where, you know, she was wondering whether they had any recourse to say, why can't we claim, claim it as ours? Right. Um, and we've been through that with the microneedling um, where we wanted to go back to the acupuncture board and ask them if they would reverse the decision. Um, and they were gonna bring it before the board and that meeting was scheduled for April 6th. Well, with everything happening here, um, the meeting was canceled. I've been tracking it on the um, depart um, Ed Department's website and I don't think that they have another meeting scheduled so um, if and when I do see that come up again, I will reach out and, and ask if they still would keep that on their agenda for the meeting. Be great. That's pretty much it. Any other questions for Denise? Okay, uh, moving on to the next item on our agenda is new business. And first under that list is the uh, domestic violence awareness update. Um, Amy, if you could address that would be terrific. Sure, sure. Um, so good morning, everyone. Um, so the domestic violence um, training course, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background on this agenda item. So um, back in June of um, this year, there's new legislation that was, that became effective on June 17th, 2020, which required individuals who are applying for an appearance enhancement operator's license um, to take an hour um, training on domestic violence and sexual awareness prior to submission of their application for a license. In order to implement this change, the department worked with the Office of the Prevention of Domestic Violence to develop a, and post a video on the department's website that was available to both new licensees who um, were new in the field, as well as an option for an existing licensee who may want to find information on this topic. The online video incorporates material on this topic and provides tips on handling customers they, they may con come in contact with at their place of business and pointing potential victims to an avenue for assistance. Um, our applications and websites um, have been updated with information that's available for this topic. So um, um, additional regulations related to this topic were um, adopted on November 10th. And what the, these additional regulations do, they, it incorporates one at this one hour topic into the curriculum for the various license types. 
So this allows a student to complete the hour within their educa educational program rather than making them take this hour after they've completed the entire program. So um, we've provided this information, this regulatory update to the state education department who was forwarding it to the schools that are approved to offer the program to let them know that they needed to incorporate it within their program. Staff from the Office, office of the Prevention of Domestic Violence will be available to help the schools with, with um, them to update the program and available with answering any type of questions that they might get from their instructors or school administrators on um, topics, you know, any questions that may arise from this topics being presented in the program. So um, that ends my, um, my summary. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you. Amy, thank you so much. So Amy, I just want to be clear. So it's uh, simply um, the school ensuring that the students view the video at the DOS website is all that's required? Yes, that's all that's required, but you know, it might arise to some questions for the instructors, yeah. you know, from students. So that's why um, the Office of the De um, Prevention of Domestic Violence, you know, will be there, you know, be available to help, you know, with the instructors if they have questions, you know giving them some tips and whatnot. Okay. And Kimberly, just to add to that, um, just because as a school owner, I got all the information. We received all the information. So it's a mandatory change to our curriculum for aesthetics, aesthetics, cosmetology, waxing and nail specialty. We had to, we removed an hour from unassigned and added an hour into orientation specific for this. We are required to provide BPSS with proof that we received and did that and then make mandatory curriculum changes upon renewal. So at least you know your schools have it, it's mandatory, it's into their orientation components. Thank you, Michelle. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay. Um, next under new business is guidance for reopening appearance enhancement businesses. Um, David Mossberg is not with us, so um, Ernest Delaney will take care of that topic. Ernest? Um, yes. Um, as we are aware, in New York State, there has been a reported increase in the positive testing rate of persons infected with COVID-19. Geographically, this increase seems to be happening in clusters. The clusters are located in Rockland County, Orange County, Westchester, New York City, and even upstate in Erie, Monroe, and Broome counties. As a result, the governor has created the Cluster Action Initiative. The initiative will divide clusters and the areas around them into three categories or zones, and depending upon the zone, will determine whether restrictions are in place. So there's a red zone, which is, has the greatest restrictions, and that's the cluster itself. An orange zone, which is a warning zone, is a, a buffer zone. And Finally, there's, there is a yellow zone, which is a precautionary zone, and that's also a buffer zone. Um, once a cluster zone has been identified, the zone will remain in effect for 14 days, after which it will be reevaluated based on the rate of COVID-19 infections in the zone. This affects salons in that if a salon is located within a cluster zone, this will determine whether the salon can be open and operate or if the salon must be closed. So if a salon is located in a red zone, um, red zones are the, the cluster itself, um, and red zones, all non-essential businesses are closed, including um, salons, now an A&E salon. If the salon is located in an orange zone, orange zones are warning zones, and certain high-risk non-essential businesses, for example, gyms, fitness centers, uh, including now an A&E salon, are closed. However, if the salon is located in a yellow zone, um, then in the yellow zone, non-essential businesses are allowed to be open so the salon can be open and can operate. New York State has a website where salon owners can type in their salon's address and see if the salon is located within a, a cluster zone. So, <laughs> on that website is newyork.forward.gov. Um, now, if the salon is allowed to be open, they are 
required to follow the statewide guidelines. The statewide guidelines include hand sanitizers being placed throughout the salon for use by employees and customers. Customers must only be permitted entry into the salon if they wear a face covering. Employees must wear a face covering that completely covers the nose and mouth and either a face shield or safety goggles when practicing servicing service directly to the customer. Customers seated must maintain six feet distance from all others except for the employee providing services unless a physical barrier is in place. The salon must close, must remove all non-essential amenities, including product samples and reading magazines. Um, and the salon must notify the state and local health departments immediately upon being informed of any positive COVID-19 test results by an employee. More information on the cluster zone and reopening guidelines can be found at newyork.forward.gov. Are there any questions? No, that's great information. Ernest, thank you so much. Um, lastly, under new business is the notice on gender neutral pricing and services. Um, David, again, is not with us. Is, did Paula, Paula, are you on? Yes, I am. Hi, Excellent. Paula O'Brien here. I'm, I'm the uh, director for the Division of Consumer Protection. Thank you for the opportunity to share this um, exciting new consumer protection measure that we have in New York State. Um, I believe early in the month of October, everyone got the new uh, guidance regarding the gender neutral pricing law. It went into effect September 30th. Um, the guidance goes over and basically what the law does is it makes it unlawful for businesses to charge a different price for a service or product unless there is a gender neutral reason. Um, some of the factors that businesses can consider include the amount of time it took to provide such service, the difficulty re offering such service, um, cost incurred in offering services, labor used in providing such services, material used in providing the services. Um, and if a price difference for uh, substantially sim similar services is based solely on the gender of individuals for whom the prices are the services are performed, offered, or marketed. It is unlawful. Um, so, service is a big part of your industry, uh, but there's also products, and the guidance goes through different products and how they are marketed. We we have long been marketing our products uh, for men and for women. And so what the law says is that if it is substantially similar product, you must charge the same price. The guidance gives some uh, examples related to the um, salon services and salon products. So in the, exam the product example of um, hair gel, hair pomade marketed for men with the same ingredient size and manufacture as another hair pomade offered um, by the salon for women. If the two products are virtually identical, the price should be the same. Uh, there are a number of, of other examples out there in the marketplace that generated uh, this legislation. Uh, the price disparities um, between men and women's products have been stark for a long time. And so this measure is a great, uh, great movement forward to creating equity in the marketplace. Um, does anyone have any questions? Is anybody having a difficulty implementing? I guess so far. Thank so, you. Paula, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, due to the circumstances and the nature of this particular meeting, um, there will not be a public comment period. Um, so, again, at this time, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us for this time today. It's um, your time is super appreciated. And um, at this time, we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. 
Thank you, Michelle. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone stay safe. Uh, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye